Welcome. Thanks for taking time out today. Today's whiteboard session is about the user experience and the value of user experience. It's an interesting thing to talk about given that there's many little pieces at play here, both tangible and intangible, and there's many different personalities, from executives to buyers to the clients to your end user. Both are seeking some form of value in this entire experience. And Point Clear Solutions did a really good job on a great white paper when they talked about the value and they broke it up into uh, a couple different metrics and put it on a nice uh, chart for us. They talked about quantitative versus qualitative, that's where your measurement value, and macro versus micro, that's your big picture versus little picture. And if you look at the approach, you have a broad versus narrow in scope with a tangible versus tangible. You gotta look at how each one of the quadrants and how each of the players fall into place. In the macroscopic and quantitative, you, this is where you tend to find people that say, you know, for every dollar I put in here as an investment, UX, I get a return of you know two to one hundred dollar uh, in revenue. Um, very much the number side of the equation, very much the thinking side. Once you get to, if you look at macroscopic and quantitative, this is where you know they say if a product um, has UX, uh, there's a twenty five percent less to produce with UX. So once again, we're still we're still talking numbers here. When you get on the other side of the equation, you start talking about uh, macroscopic and uh, microscopic on the qualitative side. This is where the, the feelings portion starts to come in. This is where you say, you know, customers who have uh, in, are engaging with a project where UX has been entrenched are really satisfied. So this is satisfied. And then the other portion is customers who are are much more satisfied with the product. Uh, X when UX is involved. So there's much more thinking also. This is another uh, customer based item. And, and really, why is that? I think if you start to look at user experience itself, is an industry which it, it leverages a very solid user centered methodology where we engage and understand what our audience wants and we engage and understand what the business needs and the consumer needs are from the organization that are, that are hiring us. And when you marry those together, you start to get a really good return. And that's how you kind of look at, you know, this is the thinking side, uh, thinking side. more numerical, this is the feeling side. And if you look at, with uh, uh, UX and ROI, there's sort of soft and hard elements. And the soft elements um, are a lot of times a lot harder to talk about, a lot harder to prove, uh, but they're just as valuable as the hard elements, which are usually ROI and, and lead generation and conversion and stuff, and the stuff that we typically look to measure at. But why does this make such a huge difference? If you, if you think about the market, you know, IEE did a big uh, thing on why software fails. And worldwide, yearly, about $1 trillion is spent in IT, and 15% of those projects are abandoned. And usually because they're hopelessly inadequate, there's some sort of element that just it's never going to happen. The project's never going to make it out. If you think about how much money is spent out, 5% of the company's total revenue. You can up that to 10% if you're talking financial or telecommunications. Um, and 50% of the dev work is 50% is of the time is dev rework time, which is com completely avoidable. If you think about why have development spend any time cutting code on an item that one, you know is not going to test very well. Uh, two, doesn't solve any of your consumer uh, needs, so the customer doesn't even care for it. Um, three, doesn't even enable the business to scale, so the business is getting no volume or no return on their investment there. And yet, you usually don't find out until after they started development, so you're then reworking and fixing these things. If you think about it, 100%, it's 100 times the cost of fixing an error after it's been deployed than it is if you fix it prior to development ending. Um, think about the marketing, the training, all the all the readjustment that has to happen uh, to fix a product that's that's got an issue. Um, so if you think about it, like how do we find this equation? You know, Human Factors International did this. They have a bunch of these great calculators out there, and in the calculators you can actually go in and start plugging in some real numbers and kind of see where the value is and see where your return is. I thought an interesting one to talk about was in uh, talking about conversion. It's an ROI calculator. Um, and so this actually wanted, let's put it some real world. So we think it's percentage of design, uh, drop off rate, from pre and post times the current monthly traffic and the change. And then you take that times order size, profit, divide by 12, and then you can do the ROI. So let's actually put some numbers in to make this a real project and a real equation. So let's say you have uh, currently a drop off rate of 60%, and you're hoping to get down to a 40% drop off rate, which is definitely possible if you can understand your analytics and understand your end user and really get a sense of where the problems are. 
and make incremental changes. And let's say you have traffic right now of about 100,000 people coming in, right? So your change in monthly drop-off rate would be 20,000. So bringing that over here, you get your 20,000 drop-off rate. That's your change. And your average order size is a, let's, let's just use round numbers, we'll use 50. And profit percent, um, we're about 20% profit. We'll do that times 12, and I guess that's our annual ROI now of 2.4 million. So, so far doing pretty good, but you know, has there any value, or has there been any value in this investment? I want to share it. So we'll take the annual ROI, and we think that a typical project, at least in, in our experience, runs about three years. Um, so we'll, we'll use that number here. It's a, it's a good number to start with. Let's say between design and development, research, and all the elements that came in, the stakeholders, everyone's time involved, cost us roughly a million dollars to do. So we subtract the cost, the original cost of a million dollars in this project, and then we get our total ROI, which in this case actually comes out to $6.2 million. So at the end, not a bad return for a million dollar investment is $6.2 million in return. Um, from understanding what our end user is looking for, understanding what the business goals are, um, providing this early on so this, the items can be changed if we were in development, we can actually reduce some of this stuff. And we're talking about just you know, changing a drop off from 60 to 40%. So not a bad. Hopefully this gives you some insight into understanding the value of user experience and how you can be um, valuable within an organization, both to your consumers and to the business. So thank you very much for your time.